Welcome to Walking the Half Torah. I'm Tyler Merwin, and this is Torah portion Ha'azenu. This week's Torah portion is Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 52. And our Half Torah this week is 2 Samuel, chapter 22, 1 through 51. Ha'azenu means give ear or listen up. As in the opening line of the Torah portion, it reads, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. This week's portion is the song that Adonai commanded Moses to write down and teach to the people, known as the Song of Moses. Last week we were told that Moses both wrote down this song and taught it to the people on the very same day. And it's also believed that this was part of the events of the last day of Moses' life on earth. Our half this week is the song King David wrote at the end of his life, which ties, of course, to this song of Moses that Moses wrote at the end of his life. So let's begin with a review of this week's portion or song. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Remember that the heavens and the earth are Adonai's witnesses. So Moses is summoning them to listen to the case that he's about to lay out. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. Deuteronomy 32.2 This first rain used denotes what we would actually think of as normal rain or a normal rain shower, not too light or not too heavy, just regular rain. And the dew, of course, is exactly that. It's just dew. But the gentle rain or light rain for the tender grass or the young grass, that's a grass that would have a delicate root system that could be easily damaged. So that is speaking of like a very light rain, one that wouldn't cause damage. And of course, the showers refer to heavy rain And that's for the herbs or the green plants. And this would be hardy plants with mature root systems, ones that would benefit from heavier rains without being actually damaged or destroyed by them. So the idea is, regardless of the maturity of the listener, we're plants in this metaphor, the words of Adonai would be exactly what they or what we would need. For I will proclaim the name of yod heh ascribe greatness to our God, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Deuteronomy 32, 3 and 4. There are two parties in this covenant, Adonai and his people. Adonai, for his part, is perfect, blameless, without iniquity or guilt. God's judgments are exact, just, and and fair. They have dealt corruptly with him. They are no longer his children because they are blemished. They are a crooked and twisted generation. Do you thus repay yod heh you foolish and senseless people? Is not he your father who created you, who made you and established you? Deuteronomy 32, 5 and 6. The corruption is not without an eye but with his people who have rebelled against him and against his covenant. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you, your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. But yod heh portion is his people, Jacob his allotted heritage. Deuteronomy 32, 7 through 9. Adonai has them to reflect on the past, how he has separated them as a people for himself. Now, the term sons of God used in our translation is in alignment with what's written in the Septuagint, which is the Greek writing of the Old Testament, and the Dead Sea Scrolls. But the Masoretic Hebrew text actually has that text rendered as sons of Israel instead of sons of God. Either rendering is actually good, as in this case there are equivalent expressions. Sons of God would imply a people that would uphold the character of God and act in similar manner, 
In other words, someone that could be his representative. That, of course, is what Israel was wholly created to do, to be God's representative. Because this definition of Israel, using the sons of Israel instead of sons of God, has the same connotation when we take it into that context. So when Adonai brought Israel into Egypt, there were 70 persons in total. Now, 70 is understood to be the number of the different nations that were created when Adonai dispersed the people at the Tower of Babel. This is why it was said that mankind was divided according to the number of the sons of God, or Israel. And the song goes on to say how Adonai tenderly cared for Israel like a loving parent cares for their child. But Yeshurun grew fat and kicked. You grew fat, stout, and sleek. Then he forsook God who made him and scoffed at the rock of his salvation. They stirred him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations they provoked him to anger. Deuteronomy 32, 15 and 16. Yeshurun is an endearing term for obedient Israel that actually means to be upright or righteous. But, the song says, that they will get comfortable in their blessings and in their comfort will commit adultery against Adonai with other gods. This will provoke Adonai's anger and his judgment. They have made me jealous with what is no God. They have provoked me to anger with their idols. So I will make them jealous with those who are no people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Deuteronomy 32, 21. Adonai tells them that he will use other nations to punish disobedient Israel. The song continues by laying out Adonai's anger and wrath that will be poured out on them because of their disobedience. But the enemies of Israel that Adonai used for punishment will falsely think that it is their own strength and military prowess that has actually brought them victory against God's people. For they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. If they were wise, they would understand this. They would discern their latter end. How could one have chased a thousand, and two have put ten thousand to flight, unless their rock had sold them, and yod heh vav had given them up? Deuteronomy 32, 28 and 30. The only way an enemy of Israel can have victory over them is because Adonai himself has removed his protection from them as punishment for their disobedience. For yod heh vav will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none remaining, bond or free. Deuteronomy 32, 36. When the punishment of his people is complete, he will turn back to them in compassion and will punish those who punished Israel. He then reminds Israel that their salvation will never come from foreign gods or foreign governments, but only by the hand of Adonai himself, something we need to keep in mind for ourselves today. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Deuteronomy thirty-two thirty-nine. He then relates the vengeance he will repay on his enemies who went against his people, Israel. For I lift up my hand to heaven and swear, as I live forever, if I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand takes hold on judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and will repay those who hate me. Deuteronomy 32, 40-41 The Song of Moses finishes by showing that Israel will endure, but Adonai's enemies will be taken down in the end. Rejoice with him, O heavens! Bow down to him, all gods! For he avenges the blood of his children and takes vengeance on his adversaries. He repays those who hate him and cleanses his people's land. Deuteronomy 32, 43. Moses, after reciting this song to Joshua and to the children of Israel, 
tells them, Take to heart all the words by which I am warning you today, that you may command them to your children, that they may be careful to do all the words of this law. For it is no empty word for you, but your very life. And by this word you shall live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to possess. Deuteronomy 32, 46 and 47. This song was taught to the people so that when they do fall away from Adonai in the future, and all these calamities do befall them, they would understand why, and would also understand that Adonai's punishment would not endure forever. The portion concludes with, That very day, yod spoke to Moses, Go up this mountain of the Arabim, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, opposite Jericho, and view the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the people of Israel for possession, and die on the mountain which you go up, and be gathered to your people, as Aaron your brother died at Mount Hor, and was gathered to his people, because you broke faith with me in the midst of the people of Israel, at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, and because you did not treat me as holy in the midst of the people of Israel. For you shall see the land before you, but you shall not go there, into the land that I am giving to the people of Israel. Deuteronomy 32, 48-52 This brings us from the Song of Moses to our half-Torah this week, the Song of David, 2 Samuel 22, 1-51. This is the normal half Torah for this portion. But if this portion lands on Shabbat Shuvah, which is the Sabbath between Yom Teruah or Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, then it's customary to read the half Torah from the previous portion, Vayelech, instead. This Song of David is David reflecting back on his life and giving Adonai praise for his protection and deliverance. This chapter or song also parallels Psalm 18, which David also wrote. It's almost identical in its writing. And David spoke to yod the words of this song on the day when yod delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, yod is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold, and my refuge, my Savior. You shall save me from violence. 2 Samuel 22, verses 1 through 3. The sages see this song as being divided into four parts. And this was just the first part, that Adonai protects his righteous people. The second part of the song is covered in verses 4 through 28, and it relates how Adonai saved David from all of his enemies. I call upon yod heh who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompass me, the torrents of destruction assailed me, the cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confront me. In my distress I called upon yod heh to my God I called. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry came to his ears. Verses 4 through 7. Our Father always hears His obedient children when we cry out to Him. Then the earth reeled and rocked, the foundations of the heavens trembled and quaked, because He was angry. Smoke went up from His nostrils, and devouring fire from His mouth, glowing coals flamed forth from Him. He bowed the heavens and came down, thick darkness was under His feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He was seen on the wings of the wind. He made darkness all around him his canopy, thick clouds, a gathering of water. Out of the brightness before him, coals of fire flamed forth. Verses 8 through 13. This is an awesome picture of the Holy One coming to our rescue. Yodhevabi thundered from heaven. And the Most High uttered his voice, and he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and routed them. 
Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuke of yod heh at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. Verses 14 through 16. Adonai routs and scatters our enemies with staggering power. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but yod heh was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Verses 17 through 20. David always gives Adonai the credit for his victories and admits that without Adonai's help, his enemies would have been too strong for him. yod heh dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanliness of my hands, he rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of yod heh and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his rules were before me, and from his statutes I did not turn aside. I was blameless before him, and I kept myself from guilt. And yod heh has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanliness in his sight. Verses 21-25 through 25. David was a devout to Adonai and always tried to do what was pleasing to him, as evidenced by how he even treated King Saul when Saul was actually trying to kill him. With the merciful, you show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you show yourself blameless. With the purified, you deal purely. And with the crooked, you make yourself tortuous. You save a humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them down. Verses 26 through 28. Adonai is just in his dealings with man. That in which we sow, we will reap in kind. Now we get to the third part of the song, verses 29 through 46, where Adonai granted David the strength to overcome his enemies. For you are my lamp, O yod heh and my God lightens my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. This God, His way is perfect. The word of yod heh proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in Him. For who is God but yod heh And who is a rock except our God? This God is my strong refuge and has made my ways blameless. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hand for war so that my arms can bend the bow of bronze. Verses 29 through 35. David rightly credits Adonai for his natural abilities. We should not take credit for our own talents, for our own talents and abilities actually do come from him. You have given me the shield of your salvation, and your gentleness made me great. You gave a wide place for my steps under me, and my feet did not slip. I pursued my enemies and destroyed them, and did not turn back until they were consumed. I consumed them. I thrust them through, so they did not rise. They fell under my feet, for you equipped me with strength for for the battle. You made those who rise against me sink under me. You made my enemies turn their backs to me, those who hated me, and I destroyed them. Verses 36 through 41. Adonai equipped David with humility, but also with strength for battle. They looked, but there was none to save. They cried to yod heh but he did not answer them. I beat them fine as the dust of the earth. I crushed them and stamped them down like the mire of the streets. You delivered me from strife with my people. You kept me as the head of the nations. People whom I had not known served me. Foreigners came cringing to me. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners lost heart and came trembling out of their fortresses. Verses 42 through 46. David not only credits Adonai for the power over his enemies, he gives Adonai the credit for properly dealing with his own people, which gave him a unified kingdom. 
He also gives him credit for the other nations honoring and respecting Israel and him as their king. This brings us to the fourth and final part of the song, which is David's, David's praises to Adonai. This is classic David to always end on a note of praise. One of the reasons that Adonai calls him a man after his own heart. yod heh lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be my God, the rock of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and brought down peoples under me, who brought me out from my enemies. You exalted me above those who rose against me. You delivered me from men of violence. For this I will praise you, O yod heh among the nations, and sing praises to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king, and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring forever. Verses 47 through 51. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. He watches over us and delivers us from our adversaries. Great is his salvation, who is Yeshua the Messiah, our blessed Redeemer. I pray this teaching has been edifying. Let's lift up the name of the Holy One. With love, in Echad, Shalom.